Which designer handbags do I find the most elegant? You are going to find out in this video, so make sure to watch until the end because I am actually going to tell you exactly how to prioritize your designer handbag purchase. Don't miss that part. Welcome back to my channel, my dear elegant ladies. This video has been highly requested. I have done a video called these designer bags are not classy. This video on the other hand talks only about those designer bags that I truly find elegant, that look sophisticated and that I personally think are well worth to spend on. In my online finishing school, schooloffluence.com, we talk more in depth about how to strategize your financial game. But I think this video today will definitely give you a good kind of insight to if you are, for instance, a beginner and you want to purchase your first designer handbag, how to choose and where to start. Or if you are somebody who already owns plenty of designer handbags, then maybe this video can give you some inspiration on what to purchase next. So I'm going to jump straight into number one and on number one I am not going to put nobody else than Hermes. As I've mentioned in previous videos Hermes does run the title as kind of the most exclusive brand for handbags and that's truly because they have earned it since they're very selective in terms of how many bags per year they sell to each customer and how easy or let's say how hard it actually is to get a bag from Hermes and we're talking now Birkin or Kelly. I wanted to put Hermes Kelly as my number one pick. This doesn't actually mean this is my personal pick. Again, this list is not in a priority order, but I still think that Hermes is worth mentioning in the beginning because they kind of keep the throne of being exclusive. And let's put it this way, I could put Birkin too, but I actually decided to go for Kelly because Kelly has a more ladylike appearance than the Birkin bag. The Birkin bag is also as good as an investment as a Kelly and the reason for that is, is because both are equal investment pieces. If you ever have somebody who say I want to buy you a bag as a gift, always ask for a Kelly or a Birkin because they really have the best resale value on the bag market. They are also elegant, they're timeless. Yes, uh, in some people's eyes, they feel that perhaps both Kelly and Birkin has been overly done because you do actually see a lot of people with these bags and not always is the person actually e either affluent or elegant. A lot of the times people are just purchasing the bag just because of the status of it, just because that you can and because it kind of gives you a milestone in life. I afforded a Birkin or a Kelly and look, I have made it this far. But regardless of your intention with this purchase, all I can say is that it is an investment piece. And that's really how you have to see it. Some people like to stash their money in their wardrobe, whilst other people like to stash it elsewhere. So depends who you are. Moving on to number two, and we continue with Hermes. And now I'm talking about Constance. Constance is a very kind of everyday type of bag. It has this really nice leather strap that you can wear as a crossover bag. And I would say that instead of wearing your Kelly or your Hermes to run errands with, which you of course can also do, but for your everyday errands, I think a bag like Constance would make so much more sense. It's also a little bit smaller, practical, and not as heavy as its sister, Kelly. And Birkin. The only thing I don't really like about Constance is the big H. You have this big H also on the belts of Hermes and I personally don't like them so much. I think that there are nicer buckles that you can do but hey this is how Hermes have chosen to design the bag but I will actually touch upon Constance a little bit later down in this video but all I can say is that this is definitely a really nice classic timeless piece and it looks very minimal which is what makes it look elegant. Number three, and we are still with Hermes, but this is going to be the last Hermes bag on this list. I'm talking about the Kelly Pochette, which is so elegant, so classic, and also quite hard to get. Well, also depends what color and leather. Now, the Pochette is perfect for evening activities because you use it as a clutch. You also have it in various sizes and you can literally have in any form of colors or leather. So this is a really good also collector's item. It's also a very good investment piece. Also has quite a good resale value. You have other clutch bags made by Hermes, but I personally think that Kelly Pochette is probably the more, the more popular one and also has good resale value. Moving on to number four, and now we're talking about Louis Vuitton Capuchin bag. 
I really like this bag, I must say, and the reason for that is I think it's really cute, it's really affordable, it's part of Louis Vuitton's classic bag models now, and it really comes out in different colors and materials depending on season. Let's put it this way, however. We can clearly see that this bag is somehow Kelly inspired, and I actually don't mind it somehow. I don't think it's a knockoff of a Kelly, I just think that Louis Vuitton did their kind of own version of that type of bag, and they kind of did it a little variation too to it, which I think works absolutely fine and actually can even go better for somebody who is a little bit younger. I'm not saying young as a teenager, well, a teenager could also wear the cappuccino bag, but I feel sometimes that the Kelly bag can look a little bit old-fashioned depending which Kelly bag you get. I just think that this bag is a little bit less kind of strictly ladylike while it keeps its elegance. It's really classic, it's really simple, and I like the fact that it's quite structured. This bag does not come in kind of soft leather or strong leather, this just comes as a structured model, which I personally like. But let me tell you one thing that I don't like so much for this bag, and that is, again, logo. I'm not a big fan of big logos, even though I do have designer handbags with big logos, but it's not my top choice when I purchase handbags. However, I do have a love for the cappuccino, and even though it has a bit of a bigger logo there. Somehow when you wear this bag, this logo at least is not really in your face, which I think kind of excuses this bag. I have two of these and I love both, so I will definitely consider myself buying more of Cappuccino simply because I just think that it's fun to have this bag in different colors and, and always kind of see in each season what type of design are they going to come up with next when it comes to this bag. This is a playful bag, so definitely it's fun to play around with the way it looks. I actually have a free cheat sheet called How to Look Expensive Cheat Sheet. It's absolutely free of charge and you get it by visiting classycheatsheet.com where I give you loads of free tips and tricks on how to look expensive regardless of your budget. Make sure to visit classycheatsheet.com. I'm actually going to stay a little bit on the Hermes Kelly topic since I spoke about it in reference to the Louis Vuitton cappuccino. I do want to put on number five on my list the Fendi Peekaboo bag. Now the thing about this bag is that if we actually compare it to let's say the cappuccino or the Kelly bag we can again see a resemblance but it doesn't mean that it's another knockoff absolutely not probably the designers got a little bit inspired to some level but I still think that they did their own variation to it and if I said that the cappuccino was a younger version of the Kelly bag I definitely think that the peekaboo is the youngest version and also probably the most casual version of them all the peekaboo comes in more softer leather, is definitely an everyday bag that you can just throw on your shoulder and kind of run errands with. It's not really a bag that you can wear for a dinner, let's say in the evening, which you can actually do with both Kelly and Cappuccino if you pick the smaller sizes, because those are a little bit more formal. The peekaboo, it's more casual, it's more like, let me just throw all my stuff in that bag and kind of stay chic on the go. But what I really like about this bag is that here we definitely don't have any any logos whatsoever and I do really really like the buckle even though that definitely feels a little bit Kelly inspired. I really really do like this bag I think it's really cute and really a perfect everyday bag so definitely worth investing in. Moving on to number six and I have put the Saint Laurent sac de jour bag. Now the sac de jour bag has definitely been around the block and yes a lot of influencers have this bag. You can sometimes feel like a lot of plain girls out there are wearing this bag but you know what I am going to defend this bag because this is definitely not a bag that has been overly done in my opinion and the reason for that is it's structured in a very simple way. There's a very tiny logo on the bag that you can barely see the bag comes in a very classic shape, it's very structured, you have it in loads of different colors, you also have it in like alligator imitation, and this bag is a really good purchase. Number one, because it's probably one of the less expensive on my entire list. Number two, 
This bag does not really age. I have one, I know. It is so durable and it really lasts you for a very long time, so it's definitely worth the money you spend on it. Number three, this bag is perfect if you are running errands with. If you have the bigger size, it's good as an everyday bag. You can bring it to work, to school, wherever. But if you have the smaller one, you can use the crossover strap to run errands with, or you can detach the crossover strap and take it out for dinner in the evening. Like this bag is so versatile and I do recommend it as a beginner handbag. Definitely. If you're somebody who thinks that this is definitely not an elegant bag, then let me tell you, I think you are absolutely wrong because compared to many other bags, this bag is so subtle and so discreet that you really cannot classify it as not being elegant. As you probably noticed, ladies, there is a trend in terms of what bags I'm presenting. Everything that looks subtle, minimal, elegant, sophisticated, sharp, sleek, that is kind of the type of style that I have when it comes to bags. I don't really like clutter so much. I really don't like the big logo thing. I don't like crazy things. I think everything should be neat, simple, minimal, classic, and timeless. Because really, that is worth to spend all those thousands that we spend on designer handbags. And anyway, as I'm going to present number seven, which is a classic Celine bag, you will pretty much understand exactly what it is that I mean. And I mean, look at the classic Celine bag. It is so minimal, but so chic, and Celine is a very respected brand. Definitely this bag is not super expensive, so you also can afford it, even if you are somebody on a bit of a lower budget, but okay, it's not gonna be cheap either. I must say this bag is very much similar to Hermes Constance, which is, you know, I'm telling you, designers are definitely getting inspired by each other. But again, this is a perfect everyday bag. You can use it as a crossover bag, giving you loads of flexibility when you are running errands or need your hands free. Yet again, this bag comes in many different colors and variations. I mean, you have it in such cute pastel colors as baby blue, and you have it in beige, you have it in, you know, you have it even in like lizard skin, you have it in, in alligator skin. So you can really wear this bag in many different ways. You don't necessarily need to only pick the most subtle and the most plain design if that is not your style. But I personally adore this type of style. I think this looks very chic and the buckle is just so extremely beautiful. And the best thing, there is no logo. Number eight. And we're talking Alaya, and Alaya is one of my favorite brands. I do have a favorite bag from Alaya, which you probably have seen so much of because this is probably the bag that I use the most. And I even included it in my what's in my bag video. You can watch that video after this video. But Alaya is truly a really amazing brand if you want to buy a really nice tote bag. They always have many different designs, colors, and variations. Maybe not as much color colors and variations as maybe some of the other brands that I've mentioned, but you can definitely find the perfect white bag, the perfect pink bag, kind of more those kind of subtle colors, like a bit more pastel, summery colors. One of the things that I like the most about my Alaya bag is that it's so durable and to be quite honest with you, I have been traveling with it so much. It's my go-to bag to take with me into the aircraft. And no matter how much I kick it, shove it under my seat in front of me and all those things, it has never ever lost its shape, ruined appearance or anything. Not saying now that all the Alaya bags can be treated this way. I do not know, I haven't tested them all. But one thing I can do tell you is that Alaya bags are perfect for either every day or if you may be going to the beach, maybe running errands or you're traveling like me. Honestly, this bag is so versatile and you can also get them in different sizes. On this list, I have listed the Mina and the Garans bag, but truly, just go and have a look at Alaya bags in general and you will spot some really nice gems. And what's really nice about Alaya is that not every other Joe out there wears Alaya, which makes you feel like, okay, this bag has not been overly done and it's a cute bag and it's a very useful bag. So I am going to kind of get my return on investment on this bag and those things really matter when you purchase items. How much are you going to be wearing this bag is definitely a question you have to ask yourself before you fork out thousands and thousands on a designer handbag. 
Moving on to number nine, let's talk about the Bottega Veneta Marie bag. It's a bag that is definitely classified as an everyday bag and it's perfect because it has a shoulder strap and you can see a lot of things will fit into this bag. This is really how you have to think when you're buying an everyday bag. Am I going to get my iPad or laptop or school books with me? Those things that I really need to drag with me whenever I go to work or to school. But this bag definitely ticks those boxes and what I really like about Bottega Veneta Veneta overall is that it's a very nice and subtle brand. You never have any logos. You have, of course, their signature, what do you call it? They have like this woven texture, woven. Gosh, ladies, I don't know how to pronounce it. So this woven bags, okay, let's call it that way. You know what I mean. That is the traditional signature for Bottega Veneta's leather goods. And it's beautiful. I think it's so chic. And you also have a lot of high society women who just love Bottega Veneta as their everyday bags. You have them actually in all kinds of variations, but I did want to put the Marie on this list because I really think that it's a new bag that deserves a little bit of attention and I did want to put Bottega Veneta on my list. Now coming to number 10, and don't forget to watch until the end of this video ladies because I'm actually going to recommend which of these bags I think is the best to buy as your first or maybe next designer purchase. Okay, but talking about number 10, I am going to put Bottega Veneta again. And the reason for that is I didn't only want to put a bunch of everyday bags on this list. I did want to have a bit of variation so that I added a few evening bags too. And as an elegant evening bag, especially if you are going to a very dressed up event, let's say you're going to a gala where there's a long dress as a dress code. So you need a clutch. And who else to go and buy a clutch from if not Bottega Veneta? Their clutches are extremely elegant, very subtle and very chic. You have them in various sizes, so depending on if you're a petite or a tall woman, remember if you saw my previous video, you probably know what I'm talking about. If not, make sure to watch that one afterwards. You can have it a bit smaller size, you can have it a bit longer, depends. And you have so many beautiful color variations. What I really like about this clutch is that it's made out of silk. And I'm a big a silky lover. I love the fabric silk. There is nothing that screams more elegance than silk. So having that as part of your handbag is very unusual. You don't really have many silk bags out there, maybe only as a clutch. So for this reason, I really wanted to put this bag on my number 10. And that kind of summarizes the whole list we have done from one till 10. I must say though, this is not the only elegant handbags out there. There are so many elegant handbags that of course I didn't include, but I did want to give you a bit of a sample and with my specific mindset, in mind because as I said all these handbags they have a running theme being sober being discreet being subtle being minimal being classic and being timeless if you really want to have a foolproof elegant wardrobe then this is really how you have to structure your mindset now I am going to answer you the question which of these handbags would I recommend a beginner or somebody who would like to purchase your next handbag which one should you go for Ideally, you should go for an Hermes, Kelly or Birkin because of the resale value. But at the same time, let's be realistic and they are very expensive unless you have your partner who will buy it for you. But if I'm going to recommend you a bag, I definitely think you should just go for the Saint Laurent Sac de Jour bag. And that is because it's one of the cheapest on this list and also it's one of the most versatile on this list. You are not going to go wrong. If you are somebody who yet cannot afford a bag that costs $1,500, $2,000, because that's actually how much the cheapest bags on this list cost. If you're not there yet, ladies, there are ways to go around this and I will do another video about this. So make sure you have subscribed and make sure you watch now. These designer handbags are not classy and I will see you in that video.